another animal that lived here was the Teratornus, a great bird much bigger than a present-day eagle. But just as judgmental. The Teratornus was a kind of vulture. Wow, rude. It ate the remains of animals that were dead or dying, tearing its victims with its large hooked beak. Would you like someone to describe how you eat? When it opened its wings, they must have measured 11 to 12 feet from tip to tip. <laughs> but who's counting? Here, too, lived the dire wolf, perhaps one of the largest wolves that ever lived. It often hunted in groups or packs. Hmm. The dire wolf had a large, heavy head and very strong jaws. And a very creative literary agent. Another animal that was found here was the saber-tooth cat. From the Flintstones credits, but not the actual show. As big as today's African lion, the saber-tooth cat was a strong and dangerous hunting animal. It takes its name from the two huge teeth that grew down from its upper jaw. This made them preternaturally adept at opening cans of V8. A great many other kinds of animals lived on these grassy plains. We could name them all, but you get the idea. A kind of camel lived here. This animal was similar in some respects to today's llama of South America, but it was much larger. It ate the grasses of the plain. The hump wasn't invented until 3000 BC. One of the most interesting of these ancient animals, perhaps, was the giant ground sloth, a strange lumbering plant-eating beast whose closest relative was the little tree sloth of Central and South America. Sloth. The giant ground sloth was bigger than today's grizzly bear. Standing erect, it would have towered over a tall man. Here he's depicted, imagining perhaps that he had forgotten to reply to an important email. Other animals lived here in prehistoric times. Animals like the ancient bison. And the proto-schnauzer. The great lion. And the squirrel from Ice Age. And many smaller animals. Like the skunk. I won the skunk. Okay, now you go. The jackrabbit and others. These animals are all dead and there's nothing you can do about it. But how were the bones of these animals preserved in tar for us to find today? By hilarious accident? Perhaps a small antelope stepped into a pool of tar covered by dust and dirt. It was caught to be held forever. Mm, do you have anything in ancient aliens? Or perhaps rain had covered a tar pool with water. An ancient bison may have stopped to get a drink. If you're an ancient bison, you may be eligible for compensation through class action. But as he stepped into the pool, he sank slowly into the tar. Well, crap. His struggles and cries as he tried to escape brought the saber-tooth cat to attack him. The saber-tooth, too, was caught. Oh. Perhaps later, to be fed upon by the giant vulture-like Teratornus. That's called economy of characters. Over the centuries, tens of thousands of animals were trapped in these pits, piled one on top of the other underneath the tar. The soft parts of their bodies decayed, but their bones remained as fossils for man to find and study. And make little dioramas and charge 20 bucks just to look at them. The work of museum scientists has made it possible to accurately recreate the past in the models you have just seen. Now it's time to have some fun, take a little license. The museum has many old photographs showing how the fossil bones were originally dug up. This is a photograph of the tar pit region as it looked in 1913, the year excavations by the Los Angeles County Museum started. Humans hadn't been invented yet. These men are excavating an ancient pit deposit of fossil bones embedded in tar-soaked sandy earth. They came to find delicious cigarette ingredients. The bones were just a bonus. This scientist is inspecting one of the deeper excavations. Hey, you don't unearth ancient evil without getting a little dirt under your fingernails, boys. In this pit, a worker has uncovered the fossil bones of a mammoth, 30 feet below the surface. Hey, maybe he was keeping them there for later. From 14 different sites, museum scientists have removed over half a million bones. That's a lot of bone broth. Today on display at Rancho La Brea, in a specially constructed observation pit, one may see a typical block of tarry material with the bones in place, just as it was originally uncovered.
lean in and have a good look. We want to add some human skeletons to our exhibit. This is part of the hip bone of a mastodon. Sorry, but he's not going to make it. This is the skull of a mastodon. H.R. Geiger's backyard grotto. Rancho La Brea is now a Los Angeles County Park. Which means zoot suits are prohibited. Look Visitors may view the pits. And behind the fences they may see life-sized models of tar pit animals recreated in concrete. Animals like the giant ground sloth. I'm the sloth with the most, babe. And saber-toothed cats. Only the park guards are allowed behind the fences. They check every five minutes to ensure the statues haven't come to life. The exciting death struggles at Rancho La Brea are no more. But the story of the tar pits is a living thing. For from the fossil bones found in the tar, scientists are continually learning many things about the past, deepening and extending our knowledge of life on Earth. Well, death on Earth. Mass extinction on Earth, to be more precise. All right, I guess that's it. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Fun With Shorts. This series is supported by Patreon and patrons like these wonderful people right here. They get early access to new episodes and exclusive episodes every month. Also, check out the updated funwithshorts.com for DVDs and merch and all the good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.